Hey, I'm Christopher J M U A, and welcome back to my channel. Unless you've never been here, of course, then welcome. I'm very glad you've stopped by. Because today's video has been a long time in the making. I am super, super late on reviewing these products because a friend sent these products to me quite a while ago, like multiple months probably, and things just kept happening, plans just kept changing, and I just had not had the opportunity yet to check out the products that were sent to me, and now I do. And I'm so excited to share it with you guys as well, because from what I've heard, it's amazing. We are going to be testing out Classy Cake Cosmetics. So if you wanna see exactly what this brand and these shades are made of, then stay exactly where you are, keep doing exactly what you're doing, and keep on watching. So part of my problem with reviewing this palette has been the fact that it is all shimmers within the palette. And as far as I'm aware, everything that the brand has is also shimmers. If you know me, you know that I love my mattes. I absolutely adore a matte crease, all blended out with a shimmer on the lid. I'd probably pick a all matte look over an all shimmer look, but that's just who I am. And the owner of this company is Sandra Cake. She is a friend of mine on YouTube and on Instagram. I will link her channel and her social accounts below so you can follow her and check her out if you'd like. I'm also going to link Classy Cake Cosmetics website there as well so you can check out the website and any of the products that I use today. But needless to say, Sandra suggests suggested that why don't I challenge myself and do an all shimmer look. I have actually done an all shimmer look once before. I did it with a Tarte Rainforest of the Sea volume 3 I think. It was in BoxyCharm and I remember doing that one but that's the only shimmer look I've ever done. If you haven't seen that BoxyCharm unboxing I will link that right up here so you can if you'd like. But anyway that's the only full shimmer look I've ever done. So Sandra challenged me to create an all shimmer look which I'm going to be doing today but I don't think this is gonna make me a newly found all over shimmer kind of guy. I don't think I'll ever be that kind of guy. First of all though, I've got to say how proud I am of Sandra because she has put all of this together and done such a great job with it. She makes all of her products handmade, all cruelty free, all vegan, all safe. She doesn't add in all the other junk that's not necessary for shadows. So everything is just clean and that's what I like about her brand. Also, I got some really cute business cards from her and that's impressive in itself. The reason why she named the brand Classy Cake Cosmetics is because her last name is Cake. I'm guessing that a lot of people are going to assume that it's bakery themed, but as far as I can tell it's not really, but that's the that on that. Now I have two products here. Technically, I think I have three products, but I'll get into that. This is a custom eyeshadow palette. It has miscellaneous chosen shades in it, all of which are available on her website, as is the palette itself. And you can really work it any way you'd like. You can get any shade you'd like in a 26 millimeter pan for $5, any shade in a 36 millimeter pan for $10, and any shade in a 47 millimeter pan for $15. This entire nine pan palette is $40. And then this is called Diamond in the Rough. Now, because because it has been so long since I got this and because it took me so long to review it, this packaging has actually changed a little bit. Instead of a circle in the middle, it is now a diamond, hence the name Diamond in the Rough. And this is a highlighter on the outside and a blush in the center, which is really cool because then you can have your complexion products on the go with you at all times. Now, first I'm gonna go over the shades in the eyeshadow palette and I'm gonna tell you the names of the shades and we're going to swatch the shades. This is my first time actually touching these eyeshadows and the highlighter and the blush. So this is really gonna be my first impressions and seeing if I actually even like the formula I know based on the brand and who I know Sandra to be this is gonna rock. I'm hoping anyway I have high hopes, so we're gonna find out together. Okay, so the first shade is Christopher JMUA <laughs> I have a shade named after me. Isn't that awesome? She named this after me because it is pretty much me in an eyeshadow. Oh Yes, this is who I am. If you ever had to imagine my aura, my my meanness, this is my meanness. I had to zoom in for the swatch. I apologize for my nail. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Do you see that? Wow. Mmm, that was yummy. Love, 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 love. Now this next shade is the green one right here and this is called Honeydew. It is also very, very pretty. It's just like the blue, but green. <laughs> wow. 
It's so bright and vibrant. Man, it is really hard to do swatches like that that close. Now the next shade is this deeper rosy pinky red kind of tone and it is called Nona. This is also named after another YouTuber. This is gorgeous. I hope these swatches end up okay. I've never swatched like this before. That is beautiful. All three of those right beside each other are just, ugh, are just. Look at that, not a single stain. I'm not used to that, wow. Okay, this next shade is really special. This is called Forest Galaxy. It looks like the Earth, kind of, but what would be clouds, I guess, what look like clouds from far away, is actually glitter, I think, inside of it, like glitter chunks or like metallic chunks. And this is Forest Galaxy because Sandra's son's name is Forest, and he told her what three shades to use to make this shade. Now, I think that's really, really special. I think that's really awesome. Whoa, what is that? Whatever that is, is beautiful. It's like ice. That is so pretty. It's a teal aqua type color, but with icy light blue glitter reflect pieces in it. Good job, Forest. That is an awesome eyeshadow shade. You need to start picking out more colors for her. Not that yours are bad, Sandra, but <laughs> Forest can rock some shades. <laughs> Next is the shade Eggplant right here. It's that sort of, I don't know, eggplant kind of shade. Ooh, wow, in the pan, it looks so much more muted, like toneless kind of, but it has a lot more of that purple pull to it once it gets on the hand. Huh, wow, that is so nice. Next is the shade Sandra Bell, and this is also a highlighter, or can double as a highlighter, and this is a very pinky pink, very pinky pink. Ooh, so pretty. That is like the epitome of pink. That's a pink if I've ever seen a pink. It's so true to tone too. That's the kind of pink you wear to a gender reveal party. And I could see that potentially being a really nice highlighter. It has that white reflect in it, so I could see it really working on fair skin, probably not deep skin. And for row three, the first shade is called Charisse. This is almost like eggplant, but much more purple. So it's nothing like eggplant. Yeah, it's nothing like eggplant. Wow. <laughs> Man, that is gorgeous. That's a very cool toned purple. Next is the shade Fort Knox. And that's the gold shade with, it looks like specks of silver in it maybe, which maybe that's like the reflect in it. Not sure 100%, but I guess we'll find out. <sighs> wow. That is like, liquid gold that would look beautiful on dark skin oh that would be perfect i'm actually really excited about getting all these shimmers on my eye now i've got the shade autumn harvest and that's this deeper warm brown it is very autumny oh wow yeah that's like a really deep bronzy tone Sandra, you have really outdone yourself here. And that is Autumn Harvest. Okay, now that's it for specifically the eyeshadow shades. And now we're gonna go into the diamond in the rough and swatch these shades. Now the blue tone highlighter is Flying Fish and the pink blush is Mayflowers. I'm so excited about this one. Okay, this is Flying Fish. What? 
That should have been named Flying Wigs because my wig has flown. Oh my gosh. What? Yeah, that's going on my face today. It's so cool because it's different between my arm and my finger even. Okay, you saw it on my arm. Now look at it on my finger. See, that is like, ugh. <laughs> is it that gorgeous? And now May flowers. That's the pink right in the middle. And this one is the blush. That is so pretty. Now for me as a blush, that's probably not going to work because I'm really not into shimmery blushes. I'm going to use it today as a blush, but just for me, preference wise, that's not my calling. But it's still really pretty. This palette is beautiful. Wow, Fort Knox is like, almost like my skin. Impenetrable. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, and now, as always with every single one of my eyeshadow palette reviews, well, as of a certain point within my channel. I'm gonna show you the swatches via photo form, one of the versions with flash here. Then without flash here. Now normally I don't prime whenever I'm going in with a shimmer shade because most of the time I'm going in with a shimmer shade on my lid after I've already primed and gone in with mattes, unless I'm cutting my crease. Does that count? No, that doesn't count. Let's just say that doesn't count. But I'm gonna go ahead and prime my eyes with my Urban Decay Primer Potion, just in case. Honestly, ever since I started working with pigment palettes or palettes with pigments in them, I feel like it's almost necessary for me to use an eyeshadow base. It's just habit. And I feel like it's a good habit. It doesn't hurt anything, I don't think except my wallet, a small price to pay for beauty and longevity of shadow. Okay, now that I have a smooth base, it's time to decide what shade I'm gonna go into. And I think this is gonna be the tough part because like I said, this is gonna be an all shimmer look and I'm not that person, but I'm going to be today. I think what I'm gonna try and do first is take the shade Fort Knox and I'm gonna try and put that in my crease. It's just that since I haven't used these on the eye yet and they're all shimmers, I don't know how they're gonna blend out. I don't know what their temperaments are yet, so I'm not sure how to use them. I also don't normally use fluffy brushes for shimmer shades. You know, I think one of my favorite things about this palette is that it's a magnetic palette and I have really big magnetic palettes that I keep all my go-to shades in and that's usually what I carry with me. If I'm not carrying a specific palette, then I'm carrying that because that's like my everyday. So these are perfect because I can just mix and match shades if I want and just take them out and put them in my big magnetic pan with all my other shadows and combine my matte shades with these metallic shades. That is such a beautiful color. Right now I'm packing the color on, not really blending it out too much yet. Now I'm not tapping off any of the excess shadow when I'm going into the pan. And when it comes to fallout, there's quite a bit, but if you know me, you know I don't care. Kickback and fallout are necessary measures for pigmented shadows. Not necessarily, that's not like it's a prerequisite, but it does kind of go hand in hand that extra pigmentation equals extra fallout. Okay, now I wanna go into the shade Sandra Bell, the pink one that can also be a highlighter, or maybe it is a highlighter, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm gonna use it on my eye. And I'm going to essentially try and blend out the edges of the gold with this pink, if it's possible. Okay, so far this is going amazingly without a hitch. The pink is blending into the gold beautifully. Like I've personally never tried to blend gold and pink together, especially when it comes to shimmer, or not that I can remember anyway, but they're blending very nicely. They're not creating too much of another color. It's just kind of seamlessly going from gold to pink. And that's what I like about it. Now I'm gonna take the shade Autumn Harvest, the very autumny color, and I'm gonna put that more confined into my crease, kind of to deepen it up, make it look like it's a little more dimensional than what it is, and kind of give it a little bit of warmth too. And now I'm gonna go into the shade Eggplant, and I'm gonna use that just on the outer crease and 
kind of into the outer V, not a whole lot, but just a little bit. These shades are working together so beautifully. I don't know if it's just because they're shimmers or what exactly, but it's almost like the moment you lay down the color on top of another color, they just blend. You don't have to actually do the blending work. They just kind of fall into each other and then your blending is done. You know, I went just the slightest bit deeper than what I intended, but I still really like it, even though I did. It added quite a bit of dimension, but it didn't take away from the color that I already had down. Now I'm gonna go into the shade Charisse, the deeper purple one right here, and I'm gonna put this on the inner corner and the outer corner. Well, actually, I'm getting to a point now where I have too much of a buildup of shadow in my inner corner. So what I'm actually gonna do is clean up my inner corner just a little bit, take off some of the shadow that's there because I wanna put this shadow there mainly. I don't need another shadow there. So I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit so that I can put the shade Charisse right on the inner corner. I mean, you wanna be able to see the color, right? I do. And instead of just putting a concealer or another eyeshadow base over the top of it and just stacking more and more on top of the lid, I prefer going in with with a Q-tip with a point on it and some micellar water and just cleaning off the excess. I feel like it gives me a much smoother application and it performs better because you don't have all that excess buildup of shadow like you would normally. Okay, now I'm ready to go in with the color. As you can see, the inner corner is quite bare. Let's change that. Oh yeah, that is exactly what that needed. All right, inner corners are done. Now for the outer corner. That actually makes it look like I have big eyelids when I don't, but I could fool you right now. Okay, yeah, I suggest if you use these and you're gonna go in with shadow on the lid after you've done your crease with the same types of shadows, then clean it all off and cut it rather than trying to build new dimension and colors on top of other ones because it's getting to a point now where I have so many layers on my lid of shadow that it's not quite as bright as it is initially and I know it would be. So just keep that in mind. I mean, I can still see it. I know that it's still purple, but you can tell the difference between the inner corner purple and the outer corner purple because the outer corner purple is blending in with the shade eggplant. So naturally it's making it darker. Okay, so the outer and inner corner now have the shade Charisse on it. Now I'm just gonna go back in with the same brush that had flying fish on it and kind of just clean up these edges around here to make sure that both eggplant and Charisse don't have any harsh lines going into the crease because nobody likes harsh lines. We prefer nice lines. Now, of course, I have to use the shade Christopher JMUA. I just have to. It's made for me, so it's calling my name. And for this one, I'm just gonna go in with my ring finger into that beautiful, stunning blue. <sighs> and plop that right down in the center. <laughs> that is beautiful, oh my gosh. This shade is everything. I love this. I think what I'm gonna use, there's a bird interrupting me. Go away! I think what I'm gonna try and use most of these shades for are more like toppers or like primary lid shades once I build up creases of color. A lot of the lighter shades I can use as highlighters and inner corner highlights. I just, okay, for me personally, when it comes to the whole using only shimmers thing, it's not that I don't love shimmers because obviously I love, love, love shimmers. They are so beautiful, there is nothing like them. But to me, and I think it's just my cosmetologist brain, shimmery shadows or metallic shadows are made to reflect light. So, you use light catching textures when you want to bring something forward. And then you use non-light capturing textures or matte shadows and darker shadows to create recession, to make something look like it's in the background. So you change the shape of your eye with those darks and lights. Whenever you're using all shimmer, if you put a shimmer in your crease, and the light hits your crease and it catches it, it's gonna make it look more like you have a flat eye instead of having dimension. Now right now, luckily this is working because there's so many different colors and different light ranges within the palette that I'm able to still create dimension with the shades themselves. However, in true light, I would bet you that there's so much reflect that it's gonna be hard to see the dimension, if that makes sense. Anyway, that's my, my little rant. I'm not knocking any shadows, of course, just my stance on 
using only shimmer shades. Now I'm also going to take the shade Christopher JMUA on a brush and I'm just going to use this for the edges on the top of my lid so that I can make a smooth line up here just so it's not so messy looking. Sandra, you killed it with Christopher JMUA. Thank you so much for making this shade. <laughs> I mean, look at my lid. Look at this blue. Ugh. Okay, now I am gonna use my Project Beauty Spray Set Go spray and spray the brush just a little bit. I'm gonna do this because I'm gonna try and make a pretty sharp line if I can right at the top of my lid with Christopher JMUA. And just to be able to get it super precise, I wanna try and wet it. Yeah, okay, that kind of worked. And when I say kind of, I mean kind of. Now, since that did only kind of work, now I'm gonna go back in with some of the shade Charisse and just blend her back in on the outer corners just to make sure she didn't disappear. We wanna make sure she's still in the party. We wanna make sure she is still in the Uber on the way to get her groceries. Wow, those two shades together work really, really well whenever you blend them. Of course, it's purple into blue, so it does make sense for the shades to work together. Okay, I live. This is beautiful. Now, the piece de resistance. I'm gonna go into the shade Forest Galaxy, that amazing, beautiful, globy looking shade, and I'm gonna take that onto my pinky, and I'm literally just going to apply this right in the center of my lid. Yeah, like that. Wow. Ooh, that's so pretty. And it added just enough light catching dimension to the top of Christopher JMUA to give it that icy goodness. Another word of advice if you use these eyeshadows, don't do your complexion products first. So now I've gotten everything built up the way that I want it to be. I think this looks really, really good. Now I did lose a little bit of the potency of the shade Sandra Bell, the pink on the outer edge. So I am gonna go back in and just spruce that up a bit, make sure that it has the level of pigmentation that I wanted it to have from the very beginning. This bird is killing me. Let's get this video to 10,000 likes and I'll bring the bird in for a talk show. Okay, I do believe the shadow is exactly where I want it to be now. I'm gonna just clean up the edges here. Okay, that's cleaned up. I really, really like that. Now, I feel like this is a perfect look to add just a little bit of liner. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with my Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid liner. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get my base down so that we can move on to the diamond in the rough. So give me just a second to do that and I will be right back. And now we're back. I went super, super light on the coverage today, obviously. Let's go in with the diamond in the rough. I just realized too that earlier I called this shade in the palette flying fish and that's not right. It is autumn harvest because this highlighter is in fact the shade flying fish and the blush is called May flowers. So I'm going to go ahead and go in with the blush first. Now normally I would go for a brush like this for my blush so I could blend it out easily. But instead what I'm going to do is go in with my Luxie 250 large eye blending brush. It's just super dense so it should pick up quite a bit of pigment and I'm going to put that on the back of my hand first. Wow. Now I'm going to go in with my fluffy brush and take that on the back of my hand and start to apply that color. Well, I guess I lied. That shade doesn't have enough fallout, so I'm not able to pick up any of the pigment with the big fluffy brush. So, I guess I'm just gonna go straight in with the Luxie brush into the little pan here and lightly apply that to my cheek so I can blend it out. I'm gonna start back here where my contour is and slowly and lightly blend it forward. Now I'm gonna go in with the fluffy brush and just diffuse it a little bit so it's a little softer. That's really pretty. I actually really like that. I know I wouldn't if it was like 
not diffused like it is. Like if I would have gone in with a blush brush into a shade like that, I probably wouldn't have been very happy with it because I feel like it would have been too much. But this is working, I like this. I just have a lot more control like this. Wow, that looks really, really natural. I look like I'm just glowing. Not super pink, not super reflective, but I look like I'm glowing. It has just enough of a reflect to look healthy and like skin. Huh. Okay, I didn't expect that because it's shimmery and I don't like shimmery blushes, but that worked. Now I'm gonna use the Luxie 522 and go into the shade Flying Fish. That one is the highlighter. Wow, upon first application, that's very pretty. It's not too much. It's not like crazy excessive. It's going to be, I think. And it can be built up. Yes, it can. Ooh. Do you see that? Oh. Now that's it for the highlighter on cheekbone and the nose and the lips. Oh, this is beautiful. But that's not it for the highlighter on my brow bone. So now I'm gonna take this Luxie 246 Precision Crease Brush and go ahead and apply Flying Fish onto my brow bone. And that is gorgeous. That really tied in the cheekbone highlight with the forehead highlight. Just all of it together looks so good. Oh, I really, really like it. Now the last thing I want to do with the eyeshadow is use this accent shadow brush and go into the shade Nona. That's the rosy pinky red. And I'm going to put that on my lower lash line. That is just beautiful. I actually forgot, but I'm also gonna take this Luxie 111 mini flat angled brush and go back into the shade Flying Fish and add that right in my inner corner. That's completely it for the eyeshadow. Now I'm gonna grab some mascara, put that on, and I'll come right back with a finished look and my final thought. All right, mascara is on and look is complete. What do you guys think? Do you like it? I really, really do. Like a lot, a lot. I honestly didn't think I was going to as much because I didn't have any mattes to play with, but I guess I can still make looks happen with shimmers, but they're just not as much fun as it can be with mattes, in my opinion. But it's still a really great look, and I love it, and I think it came along very nicely. The shadows performed well. They definitely pack a punch when it comes to the level of shimmer and foil that they have, that's no doubt. And I'm also super honored to have a shade named after me that resembles me. I love this so, so much, and I'm so thankful thankful as well to you, Sandra, for sending me these products to test out. I can say that you should be very proud because you did a really great job, especially for the fact that you're not adding in a bunch of fillers that nobody needs. It's just the shadow, and that's what's beautiful about it. And congratulations on starting a brand. I know it's a really big deal, and it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort to make it happen, and just kudos to you for pulling it off and for doing a really great job at it. I know I enjoyed everything, even the blush, which I didn't think I was going to as much as I did, but it looks natural, it looks good, it gives me a glow, and I'm happy with it. I thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for this video. If you enjoyed the video and you like this look, don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you want to. It just lets me know that you did and lets me know that you enjoy my content. If you have the time, I would love it if you would please go check out Sandra at ClassyKateCosmetics.com. I will also leave her links for her YouTube channel, which is My Real California Life, and her Twitter and Instagram also. She's an amazing, beautiful person, and it'd be awesome if you guys could check her out. If you want to see this look and more looks like them, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. My username is the same for everything. It's just ChristopherJMUA. And if you gain nothing out of this video. If you gain nothing out of any of my videos, please at least gain this, and that is to always remember and never forget that you are absolutely beautiful. And I love you guys. Bye.